my grandfather in the ministry, the very honorable Dr. Jeffrey R. Whitmer Sr. To these other fellows, laborers of the gospel. Amen. God bless you. To the officers of this church and any visiting churches. Amen. To our beloved mothers. Looking so good over there. Let's give them a hand. And to the usher musicians and all those that take up to make this great congregation, we greet you in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. And in honor of my pastor, Pastor yeah. Gregory Tyler, and his absence. Amen. 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 Not going to prolong the time. If you would, please stand with me in reverence of the reading of God's word. Amen. Go with me to the Gospel of Matthew, the 14th chapter. We'll begin our journey at verse 22 of that chapter. Verses 22 through 33. Those of you that have found that text, please signify by saying amen. amen. And it reads thus. And straightway Jesus constrained the disciples to get into a ship and to go before him until the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. And straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Yeah. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou little faith, wherefore this thou doubt? And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth thou art the Son of God. You may reclaim your seats again in the presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We want to speak to you from a thought on this particular morning. Submerged, but not sunk. Submerged, but not sunk. Let us have a quick word of prayer. Lord, as I stand to deliver the word that you have given to me on this day, I ask that you allow this word to go forth for power. Anything that would prohibit this word from going forth for power, remove it now in the name of your son, Jesus the Christ. Lord, let it go forth like a twist so cut on the left hand on the right, so that we can be convinced that you are our answer, convicted in our hearts that we need a change, and then converted into a better us. Yeah. And it's in your son Jesus' name we do so humbly ask, and all those that agree say amen. 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 Right. On this particular morning, we want to talk on the subject, submerged but not sunken. Right. To be submerged in something such as water means that there is a portion of an object below the surface of the water. In other words, there is something that is covering us or holding us down. There's something that is below the surface that is not easily seen. Every 
every now and then in this Christian walk of life, you're going to go through periods and times where you will become submerged. I believe that most of us in this church at some point were submerged in the baptism water. Uh, we did not drown there. We were lifted up. In this particular text, we see an account of Jesus walking on the water. This account is recorded, recorded three times in the Bible. It's recorded in Matthew chapter 14. It's recorded in Mark chapter 6. As well as the Gospel of John chapter 6. But the Gospel of Matthew is the only account of this event that depicts and describes Peter as he also walks on the water. The first thing we're going to notice here is that first of all, this is after Jesus had fed, performed the miracle of feeding 5,000 men with an undisclosed amount also of women and children. Now, this particular text doesn't tell us, but if you read the Mark account, it says that because of what Jesus had done, the disciples were hardened in their heart. So you know what some of us have to do when we come across folks that are hard in their heart, we have to get away from them. So Jesus, knowing what is on the hearts of the disciples, sends them away. He tells them to go to the other side and I will meet you there. And we see in verse number 22 that Jesus is straightway Jesus constrained. The word constrained means uh, to do something, to say or do something strictly. He gave instructions. He gave strict instructions. These instructions were not optional. These were something that could not be questioned. Something that no one could sit there and say, let me think about it. Jesus never asked them would they do it. He said, you are going to go to the other side. And you are going on to the other side in a ship. And you are going to do it right now. Now, 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 we think we often become lost in our thinking, well, us as Christians, uh -huh. when we follow the mandate of God, uh -huh. and we perceive that because we are walking in what God told us to do, That's right. that we are not obligated to go through anything. Uh -huh. But I come today to tell you that Job said it best, that a man born of a woman is of two days, and those days are filled with trouble. So he tells the disciples, get into a ship and go before me on the other side as he sends the multitudes away. Verse 23 says that as he sends them away, he went up into a mountain to pray, and when the evening was come, he was there alone. But now, we see in verse number 24, the ship that the disciples are in, as they follow what Jesus told them to do, is now in the midst of the sea. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm in the middle of it. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm in the middle of it right now. I'm, I'm not worried about yesterday's problem. I'm not worried about tomorrow's problem. I got problems today. I got issues today. I got something I need Jesus to work out for me today. I need a move of God today. Tribulations. I need God to show up right now. The Bible says that they were in the midst of the sea, tossed. The ship was being tossed with waves. This lets me know that they have no control over the situation. As long as I hold this towel in my hand, I have control over it. I can fold it if I like, I can spread it out if I like, but if I were to toast it, while it's in the air, I have no control over what form it takes. This is what's happening with the disciples. They are now out in the elements, in the midst of the sea, and the wind, as the Bible said, is yes, contrary. Yes, that means it is doing the opposite of what they would yes, like for it to do. Now and then, the Christian is going to find themselves in a situation that is contrary, that is working against them, that is resisting against them, that they try to do that which God had told them to do. But I got good news for you. So the wind was contrary. 
And now in verse 25 it says, and in the fourth watch. Uh -huh. Now, according to Jewish custom, uh -huh. in the Old Testament, there were three watches, four hours each. That's up. For the night. That's up. Beginning at 6 p.m. Yeah. and lasting until 6 a.m. the next morning. Yeah. Romans, at this time, created the fourth watch composed of three hours. Yeah. That's right. So at this time, this is a time of darkness. Yeah. This is the night time. This particular time when Jesus comes to them is between the hours of 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. Right. Right. So it says, on the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. Yeah. Now they are witnessing the power of God. Yeah. I don't care what it is you go through. Anytime you find yourself in the midst of something, the first thing the Christian ought to do is to look around and see just where the Lord is. I don't know about you, but I've been in enough trouble, I've been in enough situations, enough circumstances to know that all it takes is for me to cry out to the Lord. Some of us haven't tried. Some of us haven't tried it, and we wonder why we're still stuck in the midst of the sea. Go ahead, son. So the disciples witnessed him walking on the sea, and they became troubled. The Bible says that they said that it is a spirit, and they cried out in fear. That's right, that's right. Well, well. That word fear is a very troubling word. See, the problem is, we are to operate in faith. The Bible declares that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith activates the moves of God. Without faith, you cannot see God move and do the impossible. Here we have fear. The spirit of fear. Now there can only be two masters. You have God on one side and Satan on the other. So if we know that fear does not come from God, we know that it is simply a fruit of Satan. So now that we see that they have fear, Jesus addresses the fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Don't make sense. Go ahead. We hear you. Don't make sense. When I look at this, Jesus is walking in the midst of a storm uh -huh. on water. Uh -huh. And he sees that the disciples are afraid, but he has the audacity to tell them to be a good chair. Mm. Now let me, let me break the days to help somebody up in here. He sees that you are in the midst of death, but he tells you to be a good chair. He sees the folks trying to set you up on your job, but he tells you to be a good chair. He even sees the folks talking about you in a church. who he is, so he confirms who he is by saying, it is I. After he confirms who he is, because the Bible says that in all our ways we should acknowledge him and he will direct our paths. So once he makes it, makes it uh, able for them to acknowledge him, he then gives them another instruction. He says, be not afraid. But you know how we are sometimes. Distraction or the right something to happen before we take our eyes off the Lord. Oh, do I have a witness up in here? So let's, let's see how, because Peter, even though he is a Jew, is a model for the modern day Christian. I'll show it to you, I'll show it to you. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, how many of us have heard the voice of the Lord and said, Lord, Oh, 
walking on the sea. Yeah. He had already said, yes, it is I. But we still want to question. Yeah. What was it you? Unto thee on the water. Now, I, I like what, what Peter has done here. He's transitioning to questioning who is in the authority here and who is giving direction. He's now transitioning into faith. I'm saying, well, how is he transitioning into faith? Peter is asking, because you say you are who you say you are, and I believe you, I want to do the impossible as well. Yeah. He didn't pray an extra 
extra long prayer. He was sitting there praying a pretty prayer. Truth of the matter is, he didn't even pray. But what he did was he cried out to God, Lord, save me. The reason some of us are still sitting in the boat in the middle of the sea because we have little faith. And those of us that have gotten out of boat are drowning in the midst of our turmoil because we refuse to cry out.
hand over to the other side with you. Yeah. And I want you to see this. It says the wind ceased. When God shows up on the scene, yeah. there is not a time where God shows up and nothing changes. Yeah. you going through. Come on. His word is true. He said, I prepared a table before you in the presence of your very enemies. That was not to scare you. What that table is for was to have you sit there. You got death on the left side. You got lies right here.
if you want God to move on your behalf, you have got to put in work because faith without works is Amen, amen. So when we petition God to move on our behalf, be prepared to work. Now some of us don't know how to wait. So let me give you an illustration. Let's, let's look at a person whose profession is to wait. We refer to them as a waiter or waitress. want to not just sit there and look at you. The first thing a waiter wants to know is what is it that you want done? Yes, sir. Do you want to sit here? Do you want to sit there smoking or not smoking? What is it that you want? And that's how we should be just like a professional waiter. When we wait on God, the first thing we need to do is find out, God, what is it that you want?
not sunk. Somebody in there, you still learn. But you haven't sunk. You just love God. Amen. And that's what the crypto, we are immersed underwater. Amen. But we're coming right back up. Amen. You just hunt the for a little while. Amen. And you just bearing some stuff. Amen. It's just some stuff. We got to do that. So that when you come up through the whole things are passed away and the whole thing has to come through. I've been submerged. So I jump through the same. Good God, I've been the same praise. Oh, my church on. Oh, my church on. And that's why I'm here today. That is now on the ark of safety. To give you the invitation now. To come to Jesus. 